Hey folks, so this is part four of the CEO Innovations video tutorials. Thanks if you stuck with me this far. And here I'm going to be going over probably, I guess, one, the second half of the most important aspect of creating projects on the site, div elements. And these tie pretty close to Markdown. They're just a way of formatting Markdown so that we can get different looks and displays. And if you forget, forgot from my last video, Markdown is a shorthand version of HTML in which CEO Innovations is coded. So for example, on this page, there's kind of like four different, I guess, looks that come through. There's this you know, picture with an overlay option here. There's a video. There's this kind of grid of like included documents. And then there's this block of text with information. And you probably noticed also on the documentation site, you can include photos in that text pretty easily as well. So these are the four div elements available on CEO Innovation site. And they're just essentially ways of formatting your code so that you can create a better looking site. Oh my goodness, I've got so much going on. I'm sorry. So, let's go back to, I guess, the sample file. And assuming you are starting out on your site and copy the sample file, you probably have something like this. So each of these, I guess, sample divs represents one possible way of blocking together code on your site. And how you use these completely depends on what information you want to convey. So you can delete any part of any of these. Um, if you want an image text overlay of no text, you can do that. If you want an image text overlay of no image, you can also do that. Same goes for document video text, you get the idea. And again, each of these just con corresponds to a different form of formatting on the site. So image text overlay is formatting this image with a block of text. Document is formatting this row of documents. And video text overlay formats video. And free write lets you write any markdown content you want in a giant white box. So when we talk about, for most of these top three, you're just kind of doing a fill in the blank thing, honestly, with what content you want to put in there. And if you want to delete something, you can. If you want to add something, you can. So in my original site, I'm saying, you know, so let's say I wanted to add another image to my site. Right now I have this picture in which I've made the header say culinary innovation. I made the subheader say by today. I have a picture, you get the point. I can just paste this sample image text overlay or I could copy and paste the original or type it out myself. And what these kind of things here are, is in normal HTML, a commonly used divider is something called a uh, div. I think it stands for divider. It would make sense if it did. And so this is just kind of superimposing um, a more complex form of HTML markdown so that you can get different sections like you would on most websites. And that class specifier tells the computer how to format the block of code it gets from the div. And markdown equals one just tells the markdown compiler to read this as code instead of as markdown and as plain text. So if I want to create a new image, I would just type in the folder name for my image. You can also include external links, 
but sometimes they get broken. So it's much safer to include one locally. And then pick an image from my image file. So Toaster 2 looks fun. I'll include it. I can add titles or any of that, format the section however I want. If I don't want a particular part of a segment in a section, I can delete it. I can also delete this text image, image and then it'll just show as an image. So now if I go and refresh my site, I'll see that I have another picture on my page. Again, this doesn't look the best. So when you're making a page, you have to think about like the size of pictures and things like that. There's only so much, a lot of the design of your page is really left up to you. And that can mean it looks good or it looks ugly, but that's up to you. And also, you know, the limitations of this design, obviously. You can't put it all on you. And essentially, that's kind of the idea of a div element. For example, if I was to put the same content, I put an image text overlay in a free write element instead. So let's go and grab this sample free write element. So here is the same content included in this image text overlay, but in a free write, it looks different. Similarly, if you're trying to include like something like a video in a free write, it won't show up at all because Markdown doesn't have that capacity. So if you want to include videos on your site, using div elements are, will be really useful. So hopefully that kind of clears up what the purpose of div elements is. I'll go a little bit into the specifics of each element just so they make sense. And again, for this, following along with the sample files and also the text documentation on the site should be pretty helpful. Again, image text overlay is a markdown image, a header, a subheader, and a paragraph. You can delete any of these if you want to include like a link or something within that, you can. But this is the general full format. Video text overlay will be the same, except with a link instead of an image. The primary complexity for video text overlay is right now it's not super easy to include videos locally. And including videos locally will also add a ton to page time because right now we're able to use, because if we include videos from YouTube, we can use a placeholder image that makes pages load faster. So right now, if you want to include a video, include it from YouTube, baseline. So if I want to include a video on my site using video text overlay, the most important thing to remember is that rather than copying this link here, the link that, the only link that will work is if you click share and then you click on this link right here and click copy. If you're not seeing your video, that's one likely reason why. From there, you can just paste that video into the link portion of video text overlay and it will show up on your site. A general reminder about Markdown is it's indent and space sensitive. So if you have something out of line like that, it won't work. So try not to indent things because it can lead to problems, except in the case of bullets, in which case it's useful to indent sometimes. That YouTube link will swap out the old YouTube for a new video. And that's the probably easiest and best way for you to add videos to your site. The documentation se document section is, I'd say, one of the more flexible but also possibly confusing 
dissections, since pre-write is pretty much just the markdown you learned, or, or learning, rather, I should say, and image and video are very similar. In, in terms of formatting, document is just a grid. So there's a title piece right here, and that will be displayed in this pink text. And then everything else in this section is just a link. And for as many documents as you want to include in this section, just copy and paste that link, and you'll get a grid of them. Here in this example, I have four. Now, the document section uses something called iframe, which has a lot of cap capability because it can store pretty much any element. However, in terms of formatting and sizing, it's not super great at that when dealing with like a wide variety of different elements. So you're probably safest sticking to using this section for including PDFs or possibly Google Slides presentations. I have a video in the series that talks about how to include Google Drive files. I'll try to do that blinky thing here. But for PDFs, that will just be something you're storing in your assets folder and just include it like you would an image. The description you have in the link for the brackets will show up on the top of your file, your grid label as the title of the document. And then the link will be both be what is displayed and what people arrive at when they click this go to button. The last and sadly most important section is the free write section. Again, this is just putting Markdown in a free write in between two free write brackets. One advantage of this is that you can decide where you want a break in your kind of white blocks. So you can make two separate free write sections right next to each other if you want to. It all depends on how you want to format your text. But that's kind of an overview of the capabilities of these different sections. And you can order and use them any way you want, as many times as you want, with whichever aspects of them you want. However, this can let you add more complexity to your site than you would be able to otherwise. And hopefully that's useful. Again, if you are feeling confused, there's documentation on the site you can turn to, and hopefully that will be helpful. Thanks.